Some of the principles that help engagement proceed are, one, movement is motivating. So if nothing's happening and something happens, moving away from the dog, having the dog chase after you, this general movement is motivating. So frequently, when we're doing or creating reward events, they entail movement. Either I move the food or my body away from the dog. A second thing is what we call varying duration of reward event. So instead of looking at a reward as a single item, we look at rewards as little sequence, little mini events, happenings, if you will. So I may say yes and give my dog one piece of food and go right back to work, or I may say yes and give my dog six pieces of food in a row, or run around to having the puppy chase or the dog chase me while I give them food rewards. The duration of that reward event must vary. If it's very predictable, I always say yes and deliver one piece of food, stand up, reload to go again. Uh, it becomes predictable and the dog will check out between rewards. If sometimes it's one piece of food, sometimes it's three pieces of food, sometimes it lasts five seconds, sometimes it lasts 30 seconds, the dog doesn't know when the reward is over or the reward event is over. So they stay focused. Then I've got him here. I... Yes. Feed, feed, I stop. Yes. Feed, feed, I stop. There's a, there is a concept called post-reinforcement pause. And a post-reinforcement pause is simply when a dog checks out after a reward because we're too predictable. So if there's five seconds between each one of my rewards and the reward is always one piece of food, the dog knows that after each piece of food, there are five seconds where no reinforcement is coming. So they take those five seconds to do something else. But if they don't know how long it's gonna last and how frequent it's going to be, then they stay focused. Another concept that we want to keep in mind is moving away from the dog. So it's important that when we're doing engagement work, you not chase after your dog. And this is difficult for people. Frequently, if your dog checks out a little bit, your natural instinct is to move towards them and try to stick food in their face or chase after them. Instead, you should resist that temptation and move away from the dog. So if my dog looks away, I move away from the dog so that when the dog looks back, I'm moving away and the dog says, hey, where are you going? And follows after me. Now when he goes that way, you run the other way. Don't, no, don't forget, it. just run. Don't say come. Just right now, don't worry about it. See, he's gonna follow you. Movement away from the dog pulls them towards you. Movement towards them can push them away from you. So we wanna be careful about that as we go. The next concept is what we call contrast between what was happening before the reward event and the reward event itself. And the bigger the contrast, the more motivating it is. So if I'm standing still and I say yes and suddenly jump and run, there was a huge contrast between what was happening right before the reward event and the reward event itself. I was still and I exploded and leapt in the air and ran. The bigger that contrast, the more motivating. If I'm moving a lot, but it's all sort of the same, the dog can be chasing me around and I'm moving, 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 moving. That becomes kind of what we call monotone or monotonous. And so for the dog, there's movement, but the movement is all at the same level. And so in engagement, if I start and stop and stand still and then explode, the bigger those contrasts, the more motivating it is to the dog. And a final piece to the engagement puzzle is the quality of the reward or the intensity of the reward. So one of the ways we can make the dog want to pay attention more, want to stay engaged, is by what I'm giving them and how I'm giving it to them. And so I might vary the quality of the reward or, or control the quality of the reward. So if I'm training with a food that's not so palatable and I increase the palatability, what we call increase the quality of the reward, then that dog wants to pay more attention to me. I suddenly give him steak instead of kibble. The dog is more, more motivated to stay engaged. The other is by the intensity of the reward. And this brings us back to movement as a part of reward. So I could hand my dog a piece of food, or I could release my dog and have him chase after the piece of food that's in my hand and come get it. Frequently, by varying that intensity, by making the dog move more and me moving more and making it more exciting, I get more value from the reward and I get better engagement. <laughs>